Hello guys and welcome to episode number one of the Greg Tech Intergalactical Survival Guide. Today we're going to discuss a topic that seems to have a lot of people, um, a lot of people quaking in their boots sometimes, um, and that's how to start with Greg Tech as of all of the one six changes made to it. So the answer, bronze, 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 bronze. The Bronze Age is the absolute best way to get started, and as far as I'm aware, other than going around and looting a bunch of village chests, the only way to get started in Greg Tech in 1.6. So, of course, I'm sure you're all familiar with Bronze, but if not, it is 3 copper and 1 tin, and there are many, many, many various ways to make Bronze. So as you can see, all of the recipes here for the Bronze Workbench, which is a lot like the electric crafting table, and allows you to do automatic crafting and auto-ejecting. It takes six bron oh, sorry, seven bronze plates, one of the basic tier machine hulls, and one crafting table. The small coal boiler, which is going to be your equivalent to a generator in this stage of the game. It takes five bronze plates, a wrench to put it together, which doesn't actually get consumed, just some durability taken off of it. A furnace and two bricks. And then over here we have the most complicated thing yet, which is the sturdy grinder, which is a lot like the macerator from IC2. In fact, it's the exact same thing. It takes two bronze plates, two bronze gears, one basic tier machine hull, one piston, one diamond, and a wrench and a hammer to put it together. So continuing on, we've got the steam furnace, which is just a little bit faster than the vanilla furnace. It takes two bricks, four bronze plates, a wrench to put it together, a furnace, and a basic tier machine hull. And we've got the steam smelter, which is really useful. You're going to want to make one of these as almost your first machine because this will make the creation of bronze really, really, really easy. So you're going to need three bricks, two of these guys over here, these steam furnaces, one wrench, and three bronze plates. Then you're going to need the steam-powered forge... well, you're not going to need, you're going to really want this. This is another one. The steam-powered forge hammer. This is for plate bending. Normally when you make one of these bronze plates, you have to spend two bronze to do it. This makes it so that one bronze turns into one plate. For this you're going to need four bronze plates, two bronze gears, one piston, one wrench to put it together, and one basic tier machine hull. Next is the steam compressor, which behaves a lot like the um, IC2 compressor and does all of the IC2 compression recipes. It takes four bronze plates, one wrench to put it together, two pistons, one bronze gear, and a basic tier machine hull. Then you've got the extractor, which yet again is um, another another clone of an IC2 machine that allows you that you can start with a lot earlier on before you get steel, which is inevitably what we're leading up to. This takes five bronze plates, two pistons, a wrench to put it together, and a basic tier machine hole. Then we get to the big boys. These two things here. We've got the bronze blast furnace and the bronze plated bricks. So for this, um, this bronze blast furnace is pretty cheap. You just need four bronze plates, four bricks, and a wrench to put it together. And this is how you make steel. But you'll notice that on the left, it shows this. And this means that it needs a casing. And there's a scary cave noise. This means that it requires a multi-block structure casing. And what that is composed of is these bronze plated bricks, which um, you're going to need a fair bit of these. So if you get um, yourself six bronze plates, two bricks, and uh, one hammer to put it together, you'll get two of these every time you make that recipe. So if we take this bronze blast furnace and we place it down, uh, we'll see that it doesn't work. That's because we have to build a casing. And the casing uh, shows us a little picture here, and it looks something like this. So when it's actually done, it's a 3 by 3, and then a, a, a hollow square with a bronze blast furnace block there. You continue this up for another two blocks. And unlike the industrial blast furnace, you will not put a cap on this because it needs to vent uh, vented stuff. So now to make steel, all you need is four coal and one iron plus a heck of a lot of time. And did I misspell? No, I didn't. I didn't. Okay. Uh, so you just need to get yourself some coal. And it has to be coal. And then you need iron ingots as well. And when you put these in here, it will... It has to be in this order. It will get this little animation and do this. So, uh, pro tip, while the bronze blast furnace is in operation, don't break it because the center's filled with lava. And don't fall in because the center's filled with lava. Yeah. 
That's a thing. <laughs> um, so this will get you your steel, and this is how you start off with all the Greg Tech electrical stuff, because it all takes steel. No exceptions. But there's also a little bit of use for steel in progressing through the, the, the steam age or bronze age a little bit better. So here we have a high pressure coal boiler, which is five steel plates, a wrench, two bricks, and a furnace. And this is a lot like the small coal boiler that uh, is made from bronze, except it's way faster and uh, has a bigger capacity. Then over here we've got the high pressure steam furnace, which one of these is better than multiple uh, regular old steam furnace. So this takes four steel plates, one wrench, one furnace, two bricks, and one basic tier machine hole. Once you got all of this, um, you can actually go ahead and make yourself steel, which takes a long time as you can see. This recipe is really, really slow. You're probably going to want more than one of these. But what's really neat is you don't ever have to pay full for a second one. And that's one neat thing about Greg Tech casing machines is they don't mind when you do this. And then you go ahead and you get yourself some more coal and some more iron and they can kind of half share spaces. See? So now we got two and they're sharing a wall which saves you a whole bunch of these bronze plated bricks. So that's it for the recipe section. I'm going to move on to the practical applications. Catch you guys in just a second. Alright, so let's start talking about what you're going to need to do to get yourself one of these Greg Tech systems going for your early game. So the first thing you're definitely going to need is the small coal boiler. Recipe reminder here. So what you really need for this um, is just water and coal. Um, I highly recommend that in any pack that you're going to have Greg Tech in, and hopefully in every pack that has Greg Tech, you're going to have thermal expansion because it's just a beautiful mod. However, if you don't, you're going to have to hopefully have Buildcraft or some other way of supplying this water other than pumping it in manually with buckets. So what I like to do is get the Aqueous Accumulator from Thermal Expansion, which is a beautiful mod. And we're just going to put him down right here. And we'll give him a couple of waters, water sources. And now you'll see that our small coal boiler is getting water as it needs it. So the next thing is you give it coal. It's a coal boiler. So when you put in a piece of coal, what you'll get is it will consume one piece of coal and it'll light this little fire and it'll start generating heat. This red bar over here is heat. This middle bar is water. This is over here. These uh, in and outs are where you can load fluid from if you put... Uh, water cells or buckets of water or water bottles here it will load them in and if you put empty of any of those things in there probably not buckets because it wouldn't make much sense you can pull raw steam out which I'm pretty sure is or dictionary compatible with railcraft steam so another note which I'm not gonna make you guys wait around to see but I'll probably show you later is that when you put coal in here it produces dark ashes as it finishes burning Anyways, so I'm going to cut to when this has started producing steam. Alright, now we're starting to get some steam build up over here in the very left gauge where steam builds up. And you'll see this also calls the heat to occasionally drop, so if I were to take out all this coal, the heat would drop slowly by itself, but even more if it was producing steam. So now, um, again, I hope you have... Uh, Thermal expansion installed. If not, it's not the end of the world. You can use the Greg Tech fluid pipes. My steam texture is broken, and I cannot tell you why. Um, if anybody knows, please let me know, because I really want to fix that. I think Optifine might fix it, but I'm not a big fan of Optifine. So then what you've got is your, your little guy is making steam now. A couple of notes. He, this will not explode if you allow the steam to build past capacity. However, if you have this thing fully heated and then you attempt to dump water into it after it's heated, if you are on Greg Tech hard mode, that will cause the boiler to explode. And you don't want that. that that's a pretty big explosion too. So just keep that in mind. And it's also, you see, um, it's a chance to produce dark ashes. I failed to say the word chance. It doesn't always do it. I'm not sure what the number is, but it's a pretty good thing. So the first machine I would recommend making is probably a steam smelter. So, um, you know, 
those are very useful. So I'm just going to use this in substitute of a standard wrench. Uh, don't mind too much about that. Oh, ah, oh, oh, just a sec. Okay, so I'm going to use this in place of a standard wrench. You see it's just a wrench there, and I'm going to disconnect this. Okay, so now you see that we have this guy here, and we can use him if we want. So if we go ahead and we get ourselves some copper, copper ingot. Uh, let's get the industrial craft ones and a tin ingot from the industrial craft ones. And we put these in here. It'll make a really loud and obnoxious sound that we don't want it here. We'll just put this there. That's from extra utilities. That's why I like extra utilities. Okay. So this guy makes really loud and obnoxious sounds. And then you'll see that very quickly he will complete his operation here. And then, wait for it. He makes a sound like he can't, uh, like, like the, um, he makes the power out, out of power sound. And the reason for that is, these guys actually have a steam vent, which is by default on the back, which you see we have covered with our fluid duct here. So your machines need somewhere to vent their steam after every operation. You can set the output side with a wrench like that. And then I should not have broken that sound muffler. Holy crap. Okay. So now this guy will sit here and just happily produce bronze. Uh, so he'll continue on like that. And he's also not getting enough steam to constantly operate. So it would be worth your while to make a liquid tank buffer because these the steam will work with any liquid tank. It would be worth your while to make a buffer. And also we've got dark ashes in here. Make a buffer so you don't have to worry too much about this or have multiple small coal boilers running. I think four or five should do you. They're not that expensive as you can see over there. They're pretty cheap. Anyways, this will have your bronze production covered. The next thing you'd probably want after that is this guy, this steam powered forge hammer. So we're gonna put him down and we're gonna make sure that we set his output spot to the top. Okay, that little square there. We're gonna take these bronze ingots and we're gonna pop them in here. And we're going to see that, uh, let's just disconnect this smelter guy here for a second. You'll see that he should start processing them. Oh, yep, there he goes. So he turns them into plates. Hmm, this, that's a little bit broken. Hmm. So I think the Bronze Age one actually is still the same amount of efficiency. Yeah, it does not actually make it cheaper. I was not aware of that. However, this will keep you from having to craft new hammers, and that's still a little bit of a godsend because you'll go through a lot of hammers making your plates. So after you've got that guy, it's really recommendable that um, you move straight for the Bronze Blast Furnace unless you feel that you need these machines to accomplish some earlier goals, I find that at this point is when you want to move to the industrial, not the industrial, the uh, bronze blast furnace. Um, that pretty much covers everything. Uh, just be careful with your boilers and um, make sure you don't throw these out. These will be useful later. You'll you'll thank me. Um, these guys just uh, do what they do and. This one's an auto crafting table. This one makes the steam, is a macerator, uh, cooks random stuff, alloy smelter, uh, turns plates, and it actually does not raise your efficiency on making plates, which is a little bit depressing. Uh, steam compressor, extractor, and then you've got your. Uh, the whole goal of this is for your bronze blast furnace. The whole goal of the bronze. Bronze Age is to get out of the Bronze Age. So you see over here we've actually gotten some steel and more of these dark ashes, which will be useful and I'll explain in a later episode why they are. But for now, thanks for checking out this video and I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye.